Here's a great example where Desmos kind of just solves everything for us, not really much to do except be like a robot and plug things in and, and let the numbers come out. So in this case, we do have a quadratic equation. We could solve this using some algebra. I will show you that algebra at the end, but I think for most people who are taking this PSAT in eighth or ninth grade, you probably just don't know this algebra quite comfortably yet. So let's just use the calculator instead. Getting used to a calculator is a valuable skill as well. So what I did here is I just plugged in that, that top equation, 3x squared minus 18x minus 15 equals zero. Just make sure you enter it correctly. And you can see basically what it's doing is very similar to what it did on question 20. If you watch that video, it's giving me two vertical lines that go straight up and down. And where those lines uh, cross the x-axis are the values of x. So in this case, they're kind of messy numbers. So uh, they are negative 0.742 and positive 6.742. So what is the value of x squared minus 6x? Well, um, here we could take either one and plug it in. And so basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stick with the positive number because I don't know, why not? Let's trust it. And so now we just take that and that's gonna be our value of x and we plug that into x squared minus 6x and we see what we get. So uh, x squared is 6.742 squared minus six times 6.742. And here's where I'd let the calculator do the work for me again. So let's just put that in. So uh, 6.742 squared minus six, I'm gonna put parentheses, times 6.742. And you can see that it is not exactly a nice number. That doesn't really bother me because I'm kind of aware that what the, the calculator did originally was it rounded a messy number to a slightly less messy number. So here I'm gonna just kind of trust the process and be like, okay, this comes out to five. Right, it's about five, and if I rounded it, it would be five, and, and so uh, technically what I could do is I could bubble um, basically up until the two, 5.002, or I could round it to 5.003. That would all fit in this student-produced response, but I'm not going to because I know that that's not really the answer. The, the calculator rounded the X for me, so I want to make sure that I'm kind of almost like not rounding the results because I want to get back to this kind of exact value that I would have gotten had I done the algebra in the first place. So the benefit of this method is if you don't know how to do the algebra, you still have a really good shot at this question. But if you do know how to do the algebra, it's maybe a, a little bit more um, certain and a little less guesswork. So let me show you how this would work. Um, if I were doing this, uh, I would say, okay, uh, x or 3x squared minus 18x minus 15 equals zero. So uh, this already has one uh, part of a quadratic that is easy to work with. It's equal to zero. That's kind of good. But I don't love that there's a number in front of the x squared. Typically, I want that to be equal to one. And so that there wouldn't be a number there. We would just leave it off. Uh, but it's a three. But many times the SAT gives us this situation, the solution is very simple, is all of the numbers in the equation will also be divisible by that, that starting number, and then we can simplify by dividing. So if I divided everything by three here, notice how well it works out. And technically, I've got to divide the zero by three as well for the sake of symmetry. This is an algebra move, so I've got to do it to both sides. But in this case, it's not going to matter because zero divided by three is still zero. But the threes are going to cancel here. That's going to give me x squared. 18 divided by three is six, and 15 divided by three is five. So hey, what do you know? I got a much simpler quadratic, and I noticed right away that part of that quadratic is equal to the thing I needed in the first place, right? X squared minus six X. So the solution here is not even to solve for X. If I wanted to, I, I could try to factor. It's gonna be messy because of the negative, so it's not gonna be a, a nice factoring situation. We would need to use something like quadratic formula, which we don't wanna get into, but here we can kind of avoid that entirely by not solving for x. This is, a, this is something I talked about in one of the first questions, the first videos I did for this math section. I said, we don't always need to solve for x. Pay attention to what they want. In this case, if we wanna get five, uh, x squared minus six x, just add five to both sides. Then what are we left with on the left? X squared minus six X and five. And there you go, that's exactly what we had. It's exactly what we wanted. Um, that takes a lot of confidence in algebra though, right? Because when we're first learning algebra especially, our teachers are just drilling into us again and again. You gotta solve for X, get X alone, get X by itself. That is good 
you know, a, a good strategy most of the time, but the SAT is really good at kind of like giving us these weirder situations where we need to be flexible. And so in this case, solving for X, even with Desmos, is a bit of a pain. Even Desmos doing it gave me messy numbers that I had to kind of adjust. And so I think it's better in this case to do the algebra. But I just know you guys are starting off with your algebra. You might not know how to do this. And so if you need to, go to the calculator. It is possible to get a lot of stuff right with the calculator that you wouldn't know the steps for if you did it by hand. Um, so hopefully now you do know how to do it by hand, but just remember that calculator is always there if you need it.